Hi, um, in this video I am going to be showing you how to use MyaStar to rig fitted mesh. This is just going to be sort of overall um, demonstration. Um, and so, um, um, so let's get started. Uh, let's see, so the first thing you're going to want to have is you're going to want to have, um, you can either already have um, uh, activated MyaStar and then import your mesh clothing. Um, but you want to make sure your mesh clothing that you're importing is not rigged, that there's no skeleton um, attached to it from, you know, having it rigged. Um, if you have started on a um, mesh clothing and you've started some of the weights and you want to continue on there, what I would suggest is you save your weights. You then detach the skin from your mesh clothing, uh, a freeze transformation, and uh, delete history of the mesh clothing. Um, so that when, th so that there's no skin uh, uh, attached to it, and that there's no skeleton, there's no avatar, there's no nothing. That is just your mesh clothing. Or you can start with your mesh clothing already opened and no skinned, and and it's not rigged, and there's no skeleton, there's no avatar. It's just your um, mesh clothing. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go go up to here to Maya Star and I usually tear it off and you click activate my star and there it is the avatar came in and the skeleton is there even though it's hidden by default you can you can unhide it if you want to um, but everything is there that you need so um, let's see so the first thing you're going to want to do is you select your mesh clothing and you have two options um, you can either come over here and click Collision Bone Select, and what that's going to do is that's going to select all of the um, collision bones in um, in the um, in the skeleton. So you can either do that, or you know, since this is a, a mesh top, and we're not going to need the legs or the head. Or the um, or the butt or the you know um, or the arms you know we probably will need the clavicles but not the not the arms themselves you can do the second way would be to select your mesh and you could say okay I'm gonna probably need the clavicles um, the chest left and right pec upper back belly left and right handles lower back um, maybe the neck um, whoops, and down here with the pelvis. Um, nice thing about fit and mesh is you can just rig to just the um, collision, the collision bones that you want to use. You don't have to use all of them. Um, and so then you go uh, to smooth bind skin. And you have to have selected joints. I use closest distance. Um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to have max influence of one. Uh, you could have two or three. I think the maximum influence is four. But of course, the more influences per, on a vertice there can be, the, the trickier it can become um, to adjust the weights. Although, if you have too few, um, that can be a problem as well. So, But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go with one. Uh, you do not want max main maintain max influence on. You don't want that. Uh, and you can play around with the drop-off rate. Um, for fitted mesh, and like I said, this is a demonstration for fitted mesh, um, rigging for fitted mesh, not rigging for regular mesh. Uh, you can rig um, regular mesh with Maya Star. Um, um, but for fitted mesh, you could have remove uninflu un unused influences turned on if you want to. That's only for fitted mesh. Um, um, but for regular mesh, you cannot have that. Rigging for regular mesh, you cannot have that on. That will mess the whole thing up. Because, um, yeah, for fitted mesh, you do not have to have all the bones in the DAE, the, the, all the collision bones of the DAE. We will be adding the normal bones to your, to your mesh um, skin um, cluster before we export out as a DAE file because your DAE file does have to contain um, all the the normal bones um, in in it otherwise it won't upload 
Um, so we'll just go bind skin. And now we've we've bound the skin. I'm going to close that. And um, let's see. Okay, so the next step would be um, you come out over here. And since we're working on a female, we come over here to Female Avatar Appearance Editor and open that up. And um, um, let's check out the breast uh, size. Um, this is just the default rig. It will rigging. It will look waiting. It will look horrible, but it's just some place to start. You increase that to 100%, um, and you notice that the breasts look absolutely horrific. You know, um, and but they did change. They did. They did. They did change. That's because I I made it so that the collision bones change uh, when you change the slider, and they change the same as they do in Second Life. Um, and you basically, um, I have figured out um, with a friend of mine's help that you pretty much want to adjust the weights to the maximum settings um, is a pretty much a good a good thing to do. Um, um, and so, um, so we've we've made the breasts, and you can bounce back and forth between the the breast size uh, being the the maximum, which is a hundred. And 50, which is a default, by clicking on the default and clicking on Apply Slider again, and you can bounce back and forth. So while you're rigging, you can do that. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, open up our Paint Skin Weights. And you can do that in Maya Star by coming here and coming to the Paint Skin Weights tool. And um, let me move that out of the way. And oh, I didn't have the mesh selected might help if I had the mesh selected. There we go. And what I normally do is I'll select the the left pack. And see, by selecting just the bones we want to work on, our list is a lot smaller and a lot easier to um, to get to the one that we want to we want to work on. So I'll I'll pick the left um, pack bone, and then I'll come here. And newer versions of Maya, this is slightly different. Um, and I'll have replace, and I'm going to replace it with with zero and I flood it and you'll notice that the mesh clothing has um, has shrunk back down below the breast level you know before the, below the breast skin and you might even want to turn on wireframe on shaded it's a little bit easier to see how things are doing and I'll do the same thing for the right pack um, select the right pack flood and then I'm going to select the left pack again and this is where the updated version of Maya Star, where I've included all these sliders, really, really makes it so much easier. Um, so now I'm going to increase that to replace it to 100%. Um, I'm using a Wacom pen tablet. Uh, some people say Wacom, some people say Wacom. Um, and I highly recommend if you're doing any skin weight painting uh, to get a pen tablet of some sort. Um, that's pressure. That's either pressure sensitive, um, or just a pen tablet. And what I do is, I usually start near the edge of where the the mesh and the skin is, and do very small, very very light strokes. And as you see, um, the mesh is coming to the surface. And as the mesh comes to the surface, that's when you know to stop um, painting. Um, you don't want to continue. That's when you know that the mesh has um, the right weighting to it. And I'm going to try to do this very fast, so it's not going to be real pretty. This is just merely for demonstration purposes, so you can kind of get the idea. Now you don't have to start at the end. You can start here, and you see it builds up. But I just tend to find that I get a better result if I kind of start from the edges and build up from there. Okay, and then at that point, you know, you can see it's not very smooth. Um, 
what I normally do is go to smooth and I flood it once or twice to, to make it smoother and then come back in here to replace and adjust the weights a little bit more. And you want to get it to where the poke through is just barely poking through uh, the mesh avatar or, or it's not. Um, there's a little weird thing here that's um, from the blend shape. Um, it's when they were creating the blend shapes, they must have accidentally grabbed this. Um, not I didn't do it. It's Linden Lab when they created the blend shapes. Must have accidentally moved that vertice out a little bit. Okay, so that's not half bad, and it's just like I said, it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, um, it's just for demonstration purposes. Uh, let's see, I could go in here to Skin Weights Tool and Mirror, and these are just the defaults, um, and um, I think I have it set up correctly. We'll find out here in just a second. Um, from positive to negative. And I think that's right. Uh, let's see. Yep, that was right. Now, unfortunately, the default mirror thing here in in my version of Maya doesn't work really well. It only works for like basically one bone. Um, um, but newer versions of Maya have a much much better um, mirroring skin weights and third party as well. So okay. So um, um, so you can see, you know, got a halfway decent result. So far, I mean, you definitely need some more work here and more work underneath here, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, you can see that um, when I come to here and change the breast size, um, that it moves pretty good until you get to about 20 or 30, and then it starts to go in the skin there. But if you had an if you have a, um, an alpha, that works pretty good. And I see we're running out of time, so I'm going to have to stop here and, and continue on um, uh, and show you the rest of the procedure. But you can see that it definitely does, um, is a lot better. And so, awesome. So I think I'm going to pause it here, and we will I will pick up in the next video. So stay tuned for, for part two. This is probably going to be a, a two or three part um, video series. I'm not quite sure how many I'll need. So, um, um, so we'll see you in the next video.